Shalom, shalom. Welcome to the Forefront Radio. I'm your host, Afia Levi. We're going to go over a quick lesson in regards to honoring the ancestors. Specifically, we're going to touch on Joseph in Africa. Uh, so we'll be touching on a couple of scriptures in regards to Joseph in Africa. Please do me a favor, share the room with at least 10 people. Um, share the room with at least 10 people and we'll get right into our discussion. We're going to start off at... The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 44. It says, let us now praise famous men and our fathers and our fathers that begat us. So when it comes to this Bible, this Bible has never been about religion. This Bible has always been about our ancestors. Welcome to the Forefront Radio. If you're new, please share the room with at least some people. Uh, make sure that you uh, tap the screen to get the likes up and share with people that are interested in this content. It says, let us now praise famous men and our fathers that begat us. The Lord has wrought great glory by them through his great power from the beginning, such as did here bear rule in their kingdoms, men renowned for their power, giving counsel by their understanding and declaring prophecies, declaring prophecies. So Abraham was a prophet of the creator. Moses was a prophet of the creator. Joseph was a prophet. Jacob was a prophet. King David, King Solomon, all of these men are black men, according to the Bible. So it says, leaders of the people by their counsels, by their knowledge of learning meet for the people, wise and eloquent in their instructions such as found out musical tunes and recited verses in writing. So y'all remember in the book of Psalms, you had King David that wrote Psalms. This is the same thing like black men that write lyrics and beats and create songs with music, musical instruments like drums, clarinets, saxophones, guitars, harps. Okay. King David was a man after God's own heart. And this black man knew how to play musical instruments and they would prophesy over instruments. It's the same thing like the sons of Asaph. The sons of Asaph from the tribe of Levi, they would produce music for the people, and that music was biblically based. So I encourage you as uh, listeners, continue to share the live with at least 10 people, and make sure to tap the screen. Let's get the likes up to at least 10K. So let's jump down. It says, rich men furnished with ability, living peaceable, living peaceable in their habitations. All these are honored in their generations and wear the glory of their times. There be of them that have left a name behind them that their praises might be reported. You see, no matter how much money you have, it's always good to have a quality name. A good name is better to be had than riches, okay? A good name is better to be had than riches on the earth, okay? Verse 9, and some there be which have no memorial who are perished as though they had never been and are become as though they had never been born and their children after them. But these were merciful men whose righteousness has not been forgotten with their seed shall continually remain a good inheritance and their children are within the covenant. Their seed stands fast and their children for their sakes. Their seed shall remain forever and their glory shall not be blotted out. You see that? So the children of Israel, the real ones, Black, Hispanics and Native Americans, those that follow the covenant of your ancestors, your name will not be forgotten. You're going to live forever in eternity with those that are of well renown. Okay. Let's jump down to verse 16. Enoch pleased the Lord and was translated being an example of repentance to all generations. Noah was found perfect and righteous in the time of wrath. He was taken in exchange for the world. Therefore was he left as a remnant unto the earth when the flood came. 
an everlasting covenant was made with him that all flesh should perish no more by the flood. So we're getting examples throughout the history of how our ancestors interacted with the world. You have the mentioning of Enoch. Why is it that certain people groups have said that the writings of Enoch from the Ethiopian Bible are not part of the Bible? It makes no sense. Enoch is mentioned throughout the whole entire Bible, including the apocryphal writings. So why in Western culture, they don't acknowledge the writings of Enoch, although it's included in the Ethiopian Bible. I would rather trust the Ethiopians that have that particular Bible with that text than, than trust Western culture that has given you lies in their modern religion. I would rather trust that. Showing you that Enoch was an Ethiopian gives you the correlation of the bloodline going down all the way to Noah. Because I remember watching a video here on TikTok where a, a descendant of the YT said that Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth was all European. That makes no sense whatsoever. That's illogical. Then she said, tried to say because they were perfect in their generations, that's why they were all European. That makes no sense. When we're reading about people groups that descended and had interrelations with the continent of Africa, not Europe not the Isles of the Gentiles. Let's read on. Verse 18, an everlasting covenant was made with him that all flesh should perish no more by the flood. Verse 19, Abraham, Abraham, Abraham was a great father of many people. In glory was there none like unto him who kept the law of the most high. So now watch this. They mention that Abraham is the father of the faith, right? They mention that in those three so-called Abrahamic religions, right? But this Bible verse says that he kept the law of the Most High. He kept the law of the Most High, meaning even all the way back then with Abraham, they had the laws of the Bible. Even back then under Abraham, they had the commandments and the statutes, okay? Let's read on. Who kept the law of the Most High and was in covenant with him, he established the covenant in his flesh. And when he was proved, he was found faithful. He was found faithful. So this gives you the correlation of how we've been lied to in religion. Because if, Mo, if Abraham, our ancestor, is keeping the laws of the Most High and he's called faithful, then simple process of elimination would be faithful to what? Faithful to the laws. So when you say you have faith, that means you have a standard to live by and you're faithful to that standard. What's our standard? The standard is the laws of the Most High. The standard is this Bible. The standard is the apocryphal hidden writings. The standard is the New Testament. That's our standard. That's our contract. That's our covenant. That's our constitution. That's what we live by, not in a sense of a religion, but in the sense of a biblical-based culture. What you eat, what you wear, how you conduct yourself. This is a way of life. That's why the Bible is called the book of life. You understand? If you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. So let's read on. It says, they assured him, therefore, he assured him by an oath that he would bless the nations in his seed, in his seed, bless the nations in his seed, meaning what? The blessing comes through the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The blessing does not come to Ishmael. The blessing does not come to Esau. The blessing does not come to the sons of Keturah, to Juktan, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jacob was the forefather of the Israelites. And through that lineage comes the Messiah, Jesus Christ, a black man from the tribe of Judah. Okay, let's read on. It says, 
that he would bless the nations in his seed and that he would multiply him as the dust of the earth and exalt his seed as the stars and cause them to inherit from sea to sea and from the river unto the utmost parts of the land. Verse 22, with Isaac did he establish likewise for Abraham his father's sake the blessing of all men and the covenant and the covenant and made it rest and made it rest upon the head of Jacob. He acknowledged him in his blessing and gave him a heritage and divided his portion among the 12 tribes did he part them, showing you that the covenant didn't just go to Judah, the covenant didn't just go to Benjamin or Levi, all 12 tribes, all 12 tribes, which shows you that those jokers right there with the small hats that's calling themselves the, the Israelites, they're not, because the covenant goes to all 12. Where are the, where are the other tw uh, parts of the tribes? They're never going to tell you that. They're not going to tell you that all nations had the children of Israel in captivity and the descendants of slavery and colonization are these people. They'll never tell you that. Okay. So now we're going to provide you biblical based evidence and archeological evidence. I have a book called the Bible as history in pictures with archeological data proving the 12 tribes of Israel are melanated people. Okay. Let's go to Job chapter eight, verse eight, it says, for inquire, I pray thee of the former age and prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. Why is that important? That's important because you need to know where you come from. If you don't know where you come from, you're not going to know where you're going. It's very important to know your history as it relates to the Bible, because if you don't know where you come from, you're not going to know where you're going. So this Bible has never been about religion. This Bible has never been about denominationalism. This Bible is about a specific people known as the lost tribes of Israel. So now we're going to look at the archaeological data from the book known as the Bible is history in pictures. And I'm going to show you artifacts that are undeniable. If you can see on the screen, this is a depiction of, Mo of Joseph. If you see on the screen, this is a depiction of Joseph. So now watch as we go over this, we're going to show you a few things. Let me read part of this uh, caption and then we'll show you the pictures. The story of Joseph the story of Joseph marks the transition from the simple day-to-day -day family life of the patriarchs to their involvement in the mainstream world events, meaning the life and history of this people impacts the entire planet, okay? So now I want to show you depictions of the ancient Israelites in Egypt. Y'all see that on the screen? Do you see the melanated people on the screen? Although the photograph is in black and white, you can tell clearly based on the depictions that these are melanated people. You can tell by their garments and how they're dressed. The dress is, is white and their faces are dark. This is archeological data. You see that? Someone may say, well, I can't see that clearly because there's no color. Well, there's color images as well in this book. Let me look for it real quick. So if anybody's confused, color images, archaeological data, archaeological evidence in history books related to the Bible, you can tell by the brown skin of the animal and the brown skin of the person that this is not a European person. Put a one in the chat if this makes sense. Put a one in the chat if this makes sense. Showing you that the history that they told us of Europeans being the foundation of the Bible is incorrect. Here are some more archaeological uh, uh, evidences. 
Look at that. This is the history of the Bible that re they refuse to tell us about. This is the history of the Bible that they refuse to tell us about. Joseph in Egypt. Joseph in Egypt. This right here is a depiction of Joseph. Y'all see that? Joseph in Egypt. Showing you that they know the history, but they tried to hide it. So now this book, let me make sure I get the publishing date. This particular book, The Bible is History and Pictures, was published in 19, the copyright is 1963. And 1964, this was printed in Germany for Hodder and Stoffman Limited, St. Paul's House, Warwick Lane, London, EC4, by Dumont Press uh, and Cologne and bound by Clem and Blumon uh, Belfeld. Showing you Joseph, Joseph in Egypt. Now you can tell by the clothing that the clothing is, is white in color, correct? You see the clothing. But then when you look at the people, the people don't match the clothing. You see that? So this is this is Bible history that they tried to hide from us. Okay? Showing you they know who the people of the Bible are. Okay? They know who the people of the Bible are. So they've been trying to hide this evidence for years, but there's countless books that show archaeological data proving who the people of the Bible are. Uh, what book is that? I told the book earlier, but usually when I start telling books, they, the, the price starts to skyrocket. The book is called The Bible as History in Pictures. The Bible as History in Pictures. It's an old book. It, this book is out of print. I wonder why. This book is out of print. You can't, in some instances, you won't be able to acquire it on in the bookshelves like at uh, Barnes and Nobles or anything of that nature because it's not in print. You may be able to get it on Amazon, hopefully, if it's still there, okay? So we encourage you. Thank you so much for sharing the live. We encourage you to share the live with at least 10 people. So y'all know when I said that I would bring archaeological data to prove my point, that I, I wasn't uh, making it up. So let's go into some more images real quick. Take a look at this picture right here. Notice this is a history book of the Bible, the Bible in history and pictures. You see melanated people working in Egypt. Okay. Let me see if I can read uh, the caption that's here. Let me read the caption that's here briefly. The caption says, and let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. Genesis chapter 41, verse 35. An interesting glimpse of the activity involved in filling one of the state-owned granaries of ancient Egypt this wooden model, which was found in a tomb, illustrates the biblical narrative. You hear that? So it says that this model that was found, this model was found in a tomb, meaning it, nobody messed with it. Okay. It was found in the tomb. Okay. It, it illustrates the biblical narrative. So notice on the picture that we showed you. It was melanated people in Egypt, not Arabic, not Mediterranean type, not Grecian type, not Roman, but people with Afros in ancient Egypt working as slaves during the time of the biblical narrative. That's what we're reading here. That's what we're reading here, showing you the correlation between the people groups out of Africa that came to the Americas as slaves and their correlation with the Bible, okay?
These people with afros are the same people with afros and braids and, and, and locks in the Americas and in the continent of Africa and scattered in what we call the diaspora. This is a history book that they will not teach you in class. You're not going to learn this in school. You're not going to learn this in university. You're not going to learn this in church, but this is facts related to the Bible. A lot of times people say, where's the archaeological data that proves the Bible to be a true book? There is archaeological evidence, but yet people want to ignore it once it reveals melanated people being associated with the Bible, showing you that the entire conflict that's going on in the quote unquote Middle East, Northeast Africa is all based on a lie. It's all based on a lie. Consider that if we have archaeological data proving melanated people during the biblical events, working as slaves in Egypt, and they were relegated to the same servile position in the Americas, then who are the quote-unquote lost tribes of Israel? They weren't lost, they were in captivity. They were exiled from their lands and reclassified as colors in the crayon box. Black, colored, native indigenous, aboriginal, Indian, Negro, Moreno, Mexican, Puerto Rican, Dominican, Haitian, African American, African. These are all false titles that have been given to people groups that are elements of colonization. You understand? If you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. It says, an interesting glimpse of the activity involved in filling one of the state-owned granaries of ancient Egypt, this wooden model, which was found in a tomb, illustrates the biblical narrative. Above left is the door through which slaves bring tightly packed sacks of grain, first of all, into an office where each sack is carefully recorded by the scribes who are seen squatting on the floor. The corn is taken to the granary proper and emptied from an upstairs gallery into one of the compartments. So now let's show you the picture. Let's show you the picture. Okay. The slaves in Egypt that were gathering corn were all melanated. You see that? The slaves in Egypt, in ancient Egypt, all melanated. You see them jokers sitting on the floor right there in the office? Those were the scribes just mentioned in the caption. You see the people that were collecting, okay? Collecting the corn and dumping it into that uh, area right there. Those, those are melanated people. I'm sorry if the image doesn't look clear. I'm trying the best I can with the internet signal that I have. I had to drop down the uh, signal so that way I could have at least uh, 480p even though I wanted to have it in uh, 720p, but uh, TikTok has limitations when it comes to internet signal and what I have as far as data. So let Pharaoh, quote, let Pharaoh appoint offices over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years, Genesis chapter 41, verse 34. Taxation in Egypt was strictly enforced. Three men were seen prostrated in an attitude of submission before scribes who are seated in a covered bower and who are noting down the amounts still to pay. Further, defaulters are being marched in on the right and are being assisted by the bailiffs to assume the proper posture. You see? So let me show you that real quick. All right, let me show you some of the uh, archaeological findings. So now these folks are engraved in the walls of Egypt. Question, so wouldn't that make the ancient lands in the America corn originated here? So no, so now you have to understand the correlation. The 12 tribes of Israel lived in the continent of Africa. After the Assyrian captivity, many of them traveled overseas around Africa to South America and worked their way up. So to answer your question, they brought their agricultural techniques 
from the continent of Africa to the Americas. There is no Bering Strait theory. That's illogical information given to you by these witches and warlocks that they call scientists to deceive you. Let's use common sense. Why would you travel from, from Asia and Russia in a winter tundra region to pass down all the way through the Bering Straits into Alaska, into Canada during that quote unquote ice age, only to travel and live in Mexico, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Haiti, Jamaica, Brazil. That makes no sense. And don't nobody got no car like that to drive that far. Or who's going to walk that far just to get down to, to fertile land? That's that's stupid. That's illogical. We didn't have the transportation techniques that we have today, showing you that the way they came from Africa to the Americas was via boat. And you can read about that in Second Ezra. Let's touch on that briefly. So-called Hispanics, you are part of the northern kingdom of the Israelites. So let's prove that with the Bible. So-called native indigenous, aboriginal, you're part of the 10 tribes of Israel. Let's prove that with the Bible. Christopher Columbus used the writings of Ezra to figure out what group of people came to the Americas, okay, in the quote-unquote new world. Let's prove that. Let's go to 2 Ezra chapter 13 to find out the prophecy. 2 Ezra chapter, uh, chapter 13 and verse 40. Those are the 10 tribes. Which tribes? The 10 tribes of Israel. Notice, native indigenous folks, they call themselves tribes. European folks, they call themselves clans. So we know this is talking about people that come from the continent of Africa to another region. Watch this. Those are the 10 tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king, whom Salmanassar, the king of Assyria, led captive, and he carried them over the waters, and so they came into another land. So they left from northeast Africa and went to the region of Nineveh, went to the region of the Assyrian area, that, that Turkey area, that's where a lot of the people went to. Then it says this, but they took this counsel among themselves that they should leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. Meaning where they left from was not in the east, but they left in the west where nobody was living. Okay. Then it says that they might there keep the statues which they never kept in their own land. And they entered in. So now it's going to give you the navigational course of how they got to America. It says, And they entered into the Euphrates by the narrow passages of the river. For the Most High then showed signs for them and hell still the flood till they were passed over. Till they were passed over. Meaning what? God held down the currents. So they could go into the Indian Ocean, sail around Africa, go across the Atlantic Oceans, hell still the flood, the currents, so they could go across to South America, then into the Caribbean Islands. Okay, you can read about that in the uh, history of Bartolomeu de las Casas, destruction of the Indies. They found Hebrew translators and they brought those Hebrew translators to speak with the indigenous population in the Americas. So if these people groups were not the 12 tribes of Israel, why did Christopher Columbus have to give Hebrew translators to speak to the people? This is the history that they withhold from us, but it's right in the hidden books known as the Apocrypha. Let's read on. It says, for through that country, there was a great way to go, namely a year and a half. And that same region is called Arsareth. So if you look on the uh, encyclopedia, you find out that Arsareth was the name given by Christopher Columbus to designate the New World, a.k.a. Hispaniola, Haiti, Dominican Republic, okay, Jamaica, Florida, Puerto Rico, Mexico, all those regions that Hernan Cortez, Christopher Columbus, and all these uh, colonizers went to. They got that information out of the Bible, written hundreds of thousands of years before. So in 1492, when Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue, he in, interacted with the Israelites. 
Okay, so now it was mentioned in the Assyrian captivity. Let's see if we can give you some archaeological data about ancient Egypt as well as ancient Assyria showing you the 12 tribes of Israel. Let's take a look at this real quick. These are etched on the walls of Egypt. Notice the afros and braids. Notice their type of hair texture. Here's another image. Notice how this person is melanated. Okay. Here's another image right here. It says, Joseph said, set, set bread, and they set before him the firstborn according to his birthright and the youngest according to his youth. And he took and sent messes unto their kings before him, and they drank and were merry with him. Genesis 43, verse 30 through 34. Picture a banquet in ancient Egypt, such as Joseph may have arranged for his brothers. So if, if Joseph was compared to a black Egyptian and his brothers couldn't recognize him, then by simple process of elimination, you would say if the ancient Egyptians were black and Moses, I'm sorry, uh, Joseph looked like that, that means the 12 tribes of Israel are the aboriginal type that came into Africa and then sailed to the Americas, like the Olmec the Azteca, the Maya, the Incan, they were, these were all melanated people prior to the intermingling and migrations of the Europeans coming to that region uh, under, a, under a process called Blanquiomento, okay? Uh, what are we going to do now? The Bible says the truth, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So if you're finding out truthful information that you never heard before, utilize that information to your advantage, educate others, because all I can do is give you a voice and give you a, give you a uh, avenue to learn information and share it with others. I'm not a millionaire, so I can't change a lot, but I can change the minds of the people to remove uh, uh, the deception that's in their mind, okay? Because we've been lied to in church and in school. We never grew up knowing who the quote unquote lost tribes of Israel are. And now through the means of social media, TikTok, YouTube, Spotify, and other uh, sources, we could talk about these things without the hindrances of censorship. Okay. Because they will not teach you your own history. They will not give you the tools to come in and set yourself free. So we have archaeological findings showing you evidences of the Bible in history and in pictures. And many people don't want you to know this, okay? I always knew from a child that they've been hiding information from us. Yes, I, I knew as a child as well that they've been hiding information from us, okay? So we have to uh, get on a, uh, on a level playing field to understand how the global elites have been dealing with us. Okay, so here's more archaeological data right here. Let's go to this picture real quick. All right, take a look at this. Y'all see that right there on the screen? This is in ancient Egypt, Africa. Okay, on the walls in, in Egypt, Depicting biblical times. Here's another one. Look at that afro. Look at look at the brown skin of the animal compared to the brown skin of the man. You can see the you can see the fur under him is is YT, showing you that this is a non-European type. This is not Mediterranean type. This is the Negro type, the Nubian type. Okay, the aboriginal type, Indios. Okay, so they've withheld this information from us for years. Let me show you some more. This is history of the Bible in pictures. Y'all see that? History of the Bible in pictures. So during Black History Month, why didn't they show this information? They wanted to relegate you only to the status of slaves when Joseph, our ancestor, was a ruler in Egypt. Hmm. Make it make sense.
Here's another one. A group of sisters singing. Do you see the braids in their hair? You see the braids in their hair? This is, this is not a European hairstyle. Okay? Braids are not commonly used as a European hairstyle. Here's some more images. Y'all see that? This is non-European type. And this, these are archaeological findings proving the Bible to be a true book, y'all. The Israelites as slaves in Egypt. The Israelites as slaves in Egypt. All different shades of black and brown individuals, y'all. We've been lied to. That same picture, I'll show you. I'll show you that same picture if I still find it on my uh if if I still have it on my phone. Let me see if I still have it. One second. Let's see here. That same picture I have it. All right. So here here is archaeological data, okay? Showing you the the early church fathers, the people of the Bible, okay? As you can see, they're melanated. I'll show you some more. This right here was a depiction of Moses. This right here was a depiction of Moses. Why they never told us during the Ten Commandments movie that Moses looked like this? Why did they never tell us that? So if this is Moses and Moses came from the tribe of Levi and John the Baptist during the time of Christ came from the tribe of Levi and John the Baptist was the direct cousin of Jesus Christ, then what does Jesus Christ look like? Hmm. Moses came from Levi. John the Baptist came from Levi. So that means Jesus Christ would be closer to this image than the Eurocentric delusional image. Here's a depiction of Paul. Here's a depiction of Paul in the Bible. Here's a depiction of Paul. You see that? Here's a depiction of Mother Mary and baby Jesus. Here's a depiction of Mother Mary and baby Jesus. So if that's the case, who the heck is this guy? We've been lied to, folks. Break out of the matrix of deception. You are the lost tribes of Israel. This is the image of the beast. If any man worships this image, they're going to be thrown in the lake of fire, according to the Bible. It's time to wake up and get our minds right. It's time to wake up. Jesus Christ will look more like this, according to the Bible. This is why we're going over this archaeological data. So that way, you know the truth and the truth is going to make you free. Okay. So all Christians all over the earth, there's over 2.38 billion Christians and they all think that Christ is European and that's not true. Christ would be more depicted like this image right here. You understand? We've been lied to. Who is this? Who is this guy? Who is this guy? Stop it, Sergio. Stop it. Don't tell me why I worry about skin. We've been lied to and colonized all over the planet under the banner of this deity. And you're telling me why am I worried about skin? Because the Bible says there's going to be false Christ, i.e. this picture that's going to deceive the world. You got to know the difference between the Antichrist and the real one. This is going to land people in the lake of fire.
You think it's a game? You think I'm here for entertainment purposes? I'm here to educate you because you've been lied to. That's why. That's why it's important. Under this banner, you got sold as a slave. Under the banner of this image, you got scattered all over the world. Under this image, you look at those with this same demographic as your God. You better wake up out of your delusion. You better wake up out of your delusion. This is the devil. Hello. This is the deceiver, the antichrist. Hello. There's not a single Bible verse. I'm, I'm going to challenge you right now. I will give you $20 or of my cash app right now. If you could give me three Bible verses that say Jesus Christ looks like this. Come on, hit, hit the guest icon. Anybody that could prove me wrong, I'm going to give you, because I'm showing you archaeological data of the ancient Israelites being melanated, right? That's what I'm doing. We're reading history books and we're reading the Bible. So now if you could provide me three Bible verses that says that Jesus is a European, okay? Then, then make it $50. <laughs> They're not going to find it. From Genesis to Revelation, not a single verse is going to say that he's European. Watch. Make it 50 bucks. All right, let's do it. If I could give you if I could give you three Bible verses showing that the, the that Jesus Christ is a black man, I'm going to put my cash app on the comment right now. You know, I'm going to put my cash app right here. If I give you three Bible verses... Then you send me 50 bucks on my cash app. But if you could give me three Bible verses, then I can give you 50 bucks from cash app. All right. I'm not going to waste my time. You got a whole, you got over 2.3 billion Christians on the planet and they think Jesus Christ looks like this. So this is I challenge anybody. Let's do it. Come on. Get on stage. Give me three Bible verses that says Jesus Christ is a European. Amen B wants to come up. Amen Bible verses. Yeah, hi, brother. How you doing, Amen B? You got Bible verses for me? Uh, no, no. Uh, you be, you believe that Jesus was black? I, I don't believe I know. I don't believe I know. Yeah, I know that. I I don't think he was European, but I don't know if, if he was a, he was black. I thought he looked like those Jews from uh, Middle East. No, I like that you said that. Let's let's get some Bible verses and let's ask simple questions, okay? But I'm I'm waiting to see if I could get somebody that could give me a Bible verse yeah. saying that. He's what I do know is that Moses was black because he was in Africa, so so he was Correct. black. Yeah, I, I just so Moses but, Moses was the forefather and ancestor of the Israelites. He was from the tribe of Levi. Yeah, we all know here's that. A, we know that. Here's even a picture in, of Moses. In, uh, yeah, even in Muslim uh, traditions, even they say he was black. So we know that he was from Africa. It's, it's this Moses to... right here. You yeah, see that? yeah, yeah. Thank but... Moses. So, what tribe did what tribe did Moses come from? Levi, right? Yeah, yeah. So, if Jesus is the cousin of John the Baptist, and John the Baptist came from the tribe of Levi, then that must mean that Jesus Christ, who was the cousin of John the Baptist, looks like this. Yeah, I don't know about Jesus. But where you it get is what that? It is. Where you get that from? That he was African. I get it from the Bible. Watch this. I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read it out of the Bible for you. You believe yeah. in the Bible? Yeah. No, I don't. I don't. I I don't believe in the Bible because of. Um, Are you a melanated you know, they say, person? They say that I'm African, brother. But they say You're that African. we came from we came from Ham, like the 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 That's lineage not true. of sinners. Yeah, I'm not no. That's not true. From no Ham, sinners. Listen close. Yeah. Ham was a forefather of Ethiopia, Egypt, Canaan, which is Northeast Africa, and Foot. There were other black people that were not of the bloodline of Ham. There were black oh. people that were the descendants of the Shemites too, like Assyria, like the Elamites, like the Israelites, and the original Arabs prior to the Greeks and the Romans invading and calling themselves by a new name. You understand? Yeah, so yeah. So your ancestor that's... could be the children of Israel and not the seed line of Ham. That was a lie in religion to deceive us. The Arabs okay, gave okay, us that I doctrine. See. 
and the the uh, uh, the Europeans gave us that doctrine. Yeah, yeah. Watch this. Because, I'm gonna show yeah, you. How to yeah, the Bible. I'm gonna be honest with you, brother. You know where I'm from. The Europeans came and they they put this white man on a cross and told us to pray to him and and all that. Uh -huh. Unalived millions. And they said that uh -huh. we came from a lineage of sinners from Ham. We black people came from. That's not sinners. true. Yeah, that's that's why I can't believe in the Bible and all that slavery stuff. You know, I can't. Here's believe. what it is. Here's yeah. what it is. So now, now in my country, we must expect. Listen close. Don't expect the ones that won't treat you right to teach you right. The Arabs were the first ones that enslaved Africa during 700 A.D. To Qatar, the Qatar, they stopped slavery in 1952. Slavery stopped in, in places like Morocco in 1918. So it's prior to the Europeans. The Europeans took over and created chattel slavery and colonization under misinterpretations of the Bible. The yeah. original Hebrews, as you can see, yeah. Moses melanated. But brother, the I original. just want to say one thing. Brother, just one thing. Sure. But, but you know, under Islam, where I'm from, West Africa, I'm from Mauritania, yeah, and we're black. And the West, the 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 the, Af the Africans, yeah, I see, I see. Let me let me tell you, brother. Go ahead, I'm listening. Yeah, yeah. So so the so the 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 Africans when we got Islam from the Umayyads, we we had a country, we had a country or our empire called Al Muahidums. <laughs> So the, all the tribes came together in Africa and we had one big nation and we took over Spain and we took over Portugal under Islam. But under Christianity, we were slaved and they, turned, they, they told us to turn the other cheek while they stole our resources. Yeah. So under Islam, we were strong and we and even us Africans under Islam enslaved Europeans. Yeah. We enslaved the Spain and the Europeans, even Norwegians came, the Vikings, they got enslaved too, when they trying to conquer, uh, trying to steal the resources from the Africans. You hear what I'm saying? You yes, to prior pictures? to 700 AD, with, with the Ottoman Turks and the Arabs giving you Islam, the primary religion in Africa was Judaism. The same customs and practices that you still participate today are found in the Bible such as circumcision. Africa yeah. is the largest population of human beings that practice circumcision, not through Islam, but through the Bible. When the Europeans took over, they had something called the Renaissance. There was both Jews and Moors and Arabs, Muslims in Spain, in Portugal. They yeah. kicked you out in the 1400s and you went back into West Africa, San Tome, Morocco, no. Mauritania, yeah. uh, uh, Angola, and then they enslaved you and started reclassifying you as black, more Negro, and all of these things. Yeah, yeah, Your but brother, original brother, religion you see, was Judaism. You the, yeah, if you see the Muslim Africa, the Sahel region, they never enslaved us. We, we, we died. It was a war. It was not like the Christian Africa. Christian Africa was enslaved because they were taught to turn the other cheek while they stole the resources. Brother, we have jihad. We fight. We fight till we die. They never enslaved us. Yeah. So we, when you watch the people that was brought to other places in in uh, the, the slavery, the slavery, Atlantic slave trade, there was not the Moors who, who was took as, as slaves because they was very educated and the people that was taken was not educated. They couldn't read or write. There was, uh, yeah, they were going after tribes that, that wasn't fighting back. I'll, I'll be honest with you, brother. That's information that many people in in the Arab community has shared, and they lied I mean, to us. We are not Arab, brother. If you want to come to Mauritania, we have old books, eight hundred years old books that the Moorish. I, I know the oldest, the oldest library, library, the oldest library in the world is in Fez. You can come and read our books and learn our history. If you want to learn the history of Moors, come to us. Come where the Moors was living and read the books. It's all in Arabic. I don't go to China if I want to learn about Chinese history. I don't teach it. I go read the books in China. Yeah. So if you want to learn about Moors, come to the place where they live and their books. Come and read their books. We have old books here. What is this pictures that you're showing? We're going over a text called 
the Bible as history in pictures, showing you that the original Hebrews were black people. And I asked the question for those that are coming up, give me three Bible verses that the uh, people of the Bible are European and nobody has been able to. So that oh, yeah, was the yeah, primary yeah. thing. I, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. I don't believe they're Europeans. Yeah. But I don't know if they're black. I know that Moses was black. But I don't know if Moses was the forefather of the Israelites leading them out of Egypt. Yeah. But the but, slaves but, out of it's, Egypt it's, and it's, Africa it's, look like this. Yeah, yeah but, That's but what I'm thing, showing you the archaeology. Educate. Yeah, listen, brother, if you can educate us. You know the people that Moses saved. They was rebellious and nasty people. They was not good. Yeah, people. you're you, you. He saved you. Yeah, but you. But, no, but they was they was bad. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if it was us, yeah, those people was bad. They was rebellious. You know, he told them to pray to God. After five minutes, they start praying a cow. I mean, they didn't hear. They they was, and they tried yes, to. Yes, that's, that's your ancestors that was doing that. <laughs> yeah, well, the Israelites was very bad people. They always tried to kill the the prophets. It was not good people. Yeah. This is archaeology right here because this is I don't want to be from them. In they are stone. Jews from uh, from the Middle East, I think, those people. The rebellious people, those you people. See this? Jews this is Middle etched East. in stone. They're not Africans. Yeah, I hear you, brother. It's, it's okay, brother. But I, I want to prove some Europeans wrong because I'm asking them to give me some some uh 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 Verses out of the Bible saying that Christ is European or the or the original Hebrews are European and they can't. Yeah, I brought that's, up. That's the point. Europeans so, are sick human beings. Like this, <laughs> yeah, just, ah, yeah, just read their history, look, brother. Look, They're not normal. Look at the big ears. Look at the big ears. Look at the big nose. Look at the big lips. Okay. Yeah, they look just like, like you read in the Bible about David playing the harp. Just like you read in the Bible about David playing the harp. You see that? Yeah. This is a depiction of a melanated person playing the harp. Just like you read about in the Bible. This book is called The Bible as History in Pictures. This is a stone relief. This is archaeological data. All right, we got another guest that wants to come up. Let me see yeah. here. Yeah, I can leave, brother. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Thank you for joining on. Appreciate you. All right. Uh, welcome to the Forefront Radio. What's your question or comment? Uh, hello. How you doing? Hello. I, I'm doing fine. Um, shalom. Uh, I just wanted to comment on and, and, and what the brother was saying about uh, the Israelites, that they're, they're evil, they were evil people, and they're not Africans. What they need to remember is that Africa... Uh, originally, al Kibulan is a massive continent and it's made up of 54 different nations. And is the Israelites are one of the nations and it really originated from Abraham after the flood and men started to be evil all over again. The Mosai took Abraham and he tell him, hey, Go as far as you can. I'll give you a new land. I want to start a new nation with you. And uh, then out of Abraham, we have his two sons. Then we have the 12 tribes. And they are our ancestors. And yes, they, they were evil. We still are evil. But we are waking up in the land of our captivity. I just wanted to, to make that point. Because uh, that's where a lot of our people stumble the people the speak of the, the people in the bible as some other or some kind of alien but these people just like every other people have descendants we are the descendants of the very people that moses addressed in deuteronomy deuteronomy 28 and uh and the, the, the Moses in his wisdom left those markers in Deuteronomy, we are the only people, we are the only people who have those markers because we, we are truly set apart. And I I could say more, but I, I would um, just end there and I just want to um, thank you for this very um, enlightening discourse and your research. 
It's very scientific, very divine, and brother, yeah, bless you, continue the work, and um, I really stumbled across you accidentally, but I am blessed right, and I'll be here for the rest of the course. I'll send you my all numbers. All praise to the most high. Yeah, all praise to the most high, man. Continue the wonderful work. Shalom. Shalom, shalom. So shalom. here's the interesting thing, right? Here's the interesting thing. Because we'll give you we'll give you books, we'll give you historic information, we'll give you all archaeological data, and some will not believe. Okay? So the Bible says, What if some do not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? The Bible says, God forbid. Okay. So now remember the story of Samson fighting a lion? Well, guess what? They put these feats that your ancestors did on stone. Those stories are true accounts. These things that you read about in the Bible are true accounts. And I'm sorry if the picture is a little grainy, y'all. Y'all bear with me. Matter of fact, let me see if I can get a better light. Give me one second. I'm going to pause the live. I'll be right back. Let me see if I can get a better light. All right, I'm back. Hopefully y'all can see better now. King David playing a harp. Can y'all see that clearly? Put a one in the chat if you can see it. Look at the big ears. Look at the big nose. Look at the big lips. King David playing a harp. You see that? Stories of Solomon. Watch this. So, uh, Samson, King David, they all, f all fought. Lions, right? Let me read this uh, caption and I'll show you the picture. It says, And Saul said unto his servants, Provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. And David, and David came to Saul and became his armor bearer. And it came to pass when David took a harp and played with his hand, so Saul was refreshed as well, and the evil spirit departed from him. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 17, 21, and 23. A musician of ancient Babylon playing a harp, David used the same kind of instrument, a psalm of David on string instruments, or set to the eighth accords frequently in the Psalter. Psalms chapter 4, verse 6, 12, etc. You see that? Archaeological data. This is engraved in stone, engraved in stone, meaning somebody couldn't manufacture this. This is not a painting. This is not a picture. This is archaeological. Okay, historic evidence proving the Bible. Okay, so now it says, David said to Saul, the, thy servant kept his father's sheep and there came a lion and took a lamb out of a flock, and I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his hand, out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 34 to 35. Depiction of King David fighting a lion. You see that? So the Bible is a true book, folks. We've been lied to. We've been deceived. Let me show you some more. I got a lot of pictures, but I'm going to just touch on the, the main ones. Okay. Uh, David reigned over Israel, and David executed judgments and judgments unto all the people. Sariah was his scribe. 2 Samuel chapter 8, verse 15 through 17. From the time, listen to this. From the time of David,
Who walk around with loop earrings to this day? You said it's frozen. Y'all do me a favor, tap the screen, let's get the likes up. Let's tap the screen. Okay, I'm back. All right, look at this. Y'all keep tapping the screen. That's going to keep me online so that way they don't try to boot me off the internet. Keep tapping the screen. Who wears loop earrings? Who wears loop earrings? Let me read the caption. It says, when a princess in ancient East married out of her own country, it was customary to send her off in a company of a group of friends. When the Pharaoh's daughter left Egypt to wed King Solomon, we may take, uh, we may therefore take it that her ladies in waiting accompanied her. This painting from the tomb at Thebes introduces us to the ladies of a banquet dressed and coiffured for the occasion, dangling with jeweled necklaces and earrings, these Egyptian societal ladies are being waited upon by a naked girl serving. Matching up with the Bible, okay? Because they tried to trick us, they tried to deceive us, okay? They tried to deceive us into not accepting the Bible. Instead, they want us to continue on the deception that we have been taught all throughout the world. The only cure is to match the Bible with archaeological data. The only cure is to match the Bible with archaeological evidence so that way we could disprove some of the, the deceptions that we have been taught, folks. Okay? Very important to understand this. So once again, I'm asking people, hey, can you provide me with three scriptures that Christ is European, King David, King Solomon? Because we're reading throughout the Bible and we're showing you archaeological proof that these people are melanated people. I'm showing you the pictures. I'm showing you the history but they will not give you in school nor church, okay? Where's my moderators? I don't got no moderators on here. I gotta mute everybody myself. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Let's go to a text of scripture real quick. That's very important to read. I thought you was already a moderator. Somebody hacked my account. All my moderators are gone. What's going on here? People that I made moderators are not moderators anymore. What's going on? Go ahead. You're a moderator now. All right. Let's, re let's read some scripture. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 26. Leviticus 26. Verse. Leviticus 26. Verse 42, let's start at verse 40. If they shall confess their sins and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespass against me, and that also they have walked contrary to me, and that I also have walked contrary unto them, and have brought them into the land of their enemies, if then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled, and they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity, then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham, and I will remember, and I will remember the land. The land also shall be left of them, and shall enjoy her Sabbaths, while she lies desolate, Without them, notice that that area in Jerusalem is lying desolate. Notice that area is lying desolate, y'all. You understand? Make sure y'all tap the screen and get the likes up. Keep it online. 
Shadow Realm released 10 people. Okay. It says, because even because they despise my judgments, because their soul abhorred my statutes. So the reason why we were colonized, the reason why our ancestors were enslaved is because there was a direct correlation between breaking God's commandments and generational curses. Those curses include slavery, loss of identity, colonization, mass incarceration, police brutality, having your enemies rule over you. All of these are generational curses. So when you went to church, they tell you to break every chain and break the curse, but did not tell you that the curse was slavery. In order to break the chains of colonization, you have to come back to the covenant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? Not as a Baptist, not as a Pentecostal, not as a Jehovah's Witness or a Seventh-day Adventist, not as a Catholic, not as a Muslim, but as a Hebrew, as an Israelite. That is who you are. That is who your ancestors were prior to colonization, if you believe the Bible. If you don't believe the Bible, well, then good luck with that on Judgment Day, because everything we're reading out of here came true. All the history points to the Bible as black history. All the evidence leads towards that. So if you want to go off into the religions that enslaved you, okay, good luck. But we're not talking about religion here. We're talking about returning back to the covenant of your ancestors. Watch this, verse 44. And yet for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away. You see, people will come and say, oh, you Hebrews, God got rid of y'all. God ain't dealing with y'all anymore. He's only dealing with the church. He's only dealing with Islam. He's only dealing with Talmudism. He's only dealing with all of this stuff, right? That's what they say, right? But God says, God says, God says, I will not cast them away because a lot of y'all are depressed. A lot of y'all got low self-esteem. Y'all talk bad about yourselves. Y'all talk bad about each other. But this is going to restore your mind, restore you out of the decayed state that you're in, okay? So that way you could walk upright. Watch this. It says, and for all that, this is Leviticus chapter 26, verse 44. And yet for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away. Neither will I abhor them to destroy them utterly and to break my covenant, to break my covenant, my covenant, my covenant with them. For I am the Lord, their God. Meaning what? He's your God and nobody else. He's your God. He belongs to you. Islam tried to take him and make him their God and call him Allah. There ain't no way in the Bible it says to call God Allah. You understand? That's Ba'Allah or Hubal, which is a pagan deity. You understand? Our ancestors never worshipped Hubal. Our ancestors never worshipped Ashtaroth or Easter. Okay? We didn't serve the Queen of Heaven. Your God is Abraham's God, Isaac's God, Jacob's God, not Ishmael's God, not Esau's God, not Greece God, God, not Roman Catholicism's God, but the God of the Bible, the God of the ancient Israelites, the covenant of your ancestors. Let's read on. But I will, for their sakes, remember the covenant, the covenant, the covenant, the covenant of their ancestors. Who told you the Bible was about religion? Huh? Who told you that the Bible was about religion? This verse says the covenant of their ancestors, meaning your forefathers, the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Jesus, Solomon, David. All of these are melanated people. All of these are your ancestors. Return back. Get your mind right. Remove religion. Remove politics. Remove the education indoctrination that you received and start following the ways of your ancestors through faith in the black Messiah. That's the only thing for you to do now because you tried religion. Now it's time for you to keep the commandments. How do we get solutions to our communities? Keep the commandments of God and faith in the Messiah. That's how it says, these are the statutes and judgments and laws which the Lord made between him and the children of Israel, children of Israel, children of Israel in Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses. Yeah, remember we show you what Moses looked like. All right. Any questions, comments, or concerns? We can go over more archaeology at another time, but uh, what book and chapter? We just read Leviticus chapter 26. Verse 40 down to 46. 
Leviticus chapter 26, verse 40 down to 46. Thank you so much for tuning into the Forefront uh, Radio. Just want to keep this live short and to the point. We'll go over more history and more archaeological evidence from the book entitled The History, The Bible as History in Pictures. Okay. I pray that this made sense for you, and I pray that this was enlightening for those that are not familiar with this information. I'll give you all about 30 seconds to make sure that you follow this account, the Forefront Radio. The Forefront Media is this main account. My backup channel is the Forefront Radio 2.0. We're available on YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and many other platforms. Make sure that you follow this account just in case if they try to censor a band because they give me community strikes all the time for just reading books and reading showing you evidence that you know reading books gets you community strikes on on the internet so social media is full of censorship they don't want you to know this information because if you find out that the original hebrews were melanated people they're going to say who the hell is all these people that's getting money from the united states government in both ukraine and in uh the blue and white flag folks Hmm. you're going to start asking the the right questions yeah they refuse to give reparations to a certain demographic that they mistreated for centuries but folks that look like them you know you know they're going to give them money over something that's based on a lie and they call themselves the original hebrews when they are not so thank you so much for tuning in to the forefront radio may the most high bless you watch over you and cause his face to shine upon you and with that we say shalom